Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Hey guys, welcome back to the Potted Together podcast. I'm Nicole and I'm joined by my fantastic, lovely, wonderful co-hosts, Adam and Becky. Who? Hello. Us? Hello. Me? <laughs> Me? <laughs> Me? How are you guys doing? Good. Um, oh, I'm actually wonderful. afraid that my crush band is not picking up. Okay, input Yeti. Okay. Y'all, I'm confused. I must have been screaming the other day when I was recording. Oh. What is going on? <laughs> it's not even close to peaking now. Well, maybe because you were in your plant room. And the echo, oh. and I don't know. Yeah, maybe. Mm. Well, I did check to make sure that it sounded okay, and it did, so I guess we're just going to go with it. Okay, anyway, okay. sorry. <laughs> So let's, uh, well, today we're going to talk, oh, I haven't led in a long time. Okay. <laughs> today we're going to talk about beneficial bugs, predatory bugs, bugs that attack other bugs for good reason. But before we do that, we are going to ketchup and mustard. Becca, how was your week? <laughs> oh, hold on. Hold on. Before we start that, I do want to say that we have voice messages from listeners so it's we're gonna talk oh. about it, but then also we have listeners who submitted voice messages. So mm. um, that will be happening too. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, that's okay. I should have said that. Yeah, if you, if yeah, just be excited for that because a lot of people sent in voice voice memos. So yeah, yeah, this is like a very professional episode. We are a plant podcast mm. today. <laughs> we sure are. No one can leave us a review <laughs> saying where's the plant content. It's here. Um, yeah. <laughs> No pissing on the back of cars. <laughs> yeah. Yikes. Yeah. No experiences like that for me lately. Um, so, yeah, this week has been you like. Have a, you have a road trip coming up, though. So, yeah, that's true. Maybe if I'm by myself, though, I'll feel less weird, but I will be driving. So I don't know if I'll be able to concentrate. A little dangerous. Um, OK, so this week has been like a big content creation week for me. Like, I have felt very motivated to film and edit. Like, I filmed, what, like four Love videos that. this week. It's just these times come and they go, and I have really, really capitalized on it this time. Normally, I'll, I'll like, film my quota, and I'll be like, cool, all done. But this time, I filmed extra videos. I filmed ahead. You know, I just wanted to be ahead and here I am so I feel very tired but <laughs> I feel very accomplished so that's really nice I feel like I'm using my brain because I actually feel tired and I don't often feel tired like this like I feel fatigued you know what I mean not just tired mm -hmm. so yeah. it's a nice feeling and it kind of is reminding me of what spring and summer feels like when I'm actually really busy and doing things. So honestly, like this week, I've been just like dreaming and planning my garden. And like I'm total garden girl right now. My mind is really in that like so deep. So I can't really think about anything else, to be honest. And I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's exciting. So I feel like whenever I edit a video, whether it's for Not Dude or Waypoint Explorers, like I have, I feel that exhaustion too. Like, do you guys both get that? Like, after you've mm -hmm. filmed a video, you've edited it, and then you publish it, I feel like I need like a few days to just relax. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. 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 
Yeah, it's a lot, especially if you're recording and editing in the same day, which I try really hard not to do. Yeah. But sometimes I'm excited about the content I recorded and I'm like, oh, I just want to I just want to edit it or you want to like go back through it that yeah. same day and just make sure you got what you what you needed to get. Yeah, but it is tiring. Yeah, it is so tiring. It's I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of brain work and I feel like in the videos, the garden videos that I'm putting out, like my garden series is the thing that I'm probably most proud of on my channel. Like I love those videos just because it's cool to see the progression above all things. Like I love when other YouTubers do that. So I'm glad that I did that too, but it was just like crazy. Like looking back at like, cause I, I made a video about how much everything cost, which you guys, I am <laughs> <Yeah>. mother freaking <laughs> shocked. <laughs> It was a lot. Like I am. Um, do you want to know how much? You talking about your? You talking about your garden, or yeah. you're talking about the plant? Because I saw the video, the plant room cost, and I was like, "That's really cheap." Like that yeah. was inspiration for me to like take a room and do something like that with with yeah. it. But yeah. your garden, I'm so curious. Of course, how much it, did it cost? I got it. Just if you oh, guys want to know. Oh. A fungus net in the closet? It followed you in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. Um, okay, so this was for everything, like all the little things I bought. And this is also including the price of the tools that I already had. So like some of this isn't, it's a little less than this number, but it was like 3,100 something. What? Dang. I know. You guys are silent. That's how I feel. It's... Well, crazy. I mean, when you consider every, is that including the concrete slab for the greenhouse? No, it's not concrete. It's rock. But no, it's not including that rock. Okay. So then this is just the garden beds and like the whole encasement. That's thing. like the fence, all of the wood, the soil, the garden beds, the tools, everything. Mm. I don't think the it's rock. that much. I don't. I don't think it's that much. Wood is so expensive right now. So if you consider like how much wood has gone up in price because of the pandemic. Yeah. I really don't think that that's that, that, that's that bad. I mean, that's a huge garden area. Yeah, it is really big. So that definitely contributes. And I made it out of wood. So like I mentioned in the video, like I didn't do it cheaply. Like I definitely got like good materials that will last mm -hmm. um which quite honestly doesn't make sense because i'm probably going to be moving out of this house but hey it adds value to the home but i just did not even realize that it was that much as i was spending it and obviously i had saved up for a long time and i paid for it with day the plants money so it was like business expenses but mm -hmm. it's like so crazy to think that <laughs> all of that <laughs> And I got a couple of zucchini, a couple of melons, and a bunch of tomatoes. I'm like, you had wow, a lot more I saved than a myself. Of zucchini. <laughs> yeah, like massive zucchini. But like maybe like a hundred dollars worth of produce came out of that. I'm like, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, but how much you joy won't have came to do that, that this year. <laughs> how much joy and how much stress? Um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm sort of looking back and I'm I don't regret anything that I did like there's definitely like oh I would have done this differently and maybe I could have saved money here but um, I'm doing a better job of documenting the greenhouse build like financially because money is different this time around but um, I have less of it this time around so I'm going to be probably working a little bit more budget trying to cut corners where I can or just like be more efficient you know like not mm -hmm. make big mistakes so, you know, that's basically what, where my brain has been this week, just figuring all of that out. And it's been fun. It's been, again, I just feel really tired. And I took two workout classes this week, so maybe that's also why I'm tired. And it's yeah. Thursday. Wow. I've already been to two. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my week. Really nothing besides that. I mean, it's average temperatures, you know, it is warming up. Yeah. But I don't know if that... I was talking to Pam earlier and like we both decided that this was an ideal winter because like there was a lot of snow, but it melted pretty fast and there was mm -hmm. a lot of sunlight. Like the sun was really out and about this winter. It was, wasn't it? I hear it's supposed to be 50 
in Chicago on Friday, and I don't believe that. Like, I'll believe mm-hmm. it when I see it because it's February. <laughs> yeah. You well, know? It makes me worried about March and April. <laughs> yeah. That's why I was going to say, uh, don't say it just yet. Let's just not hold our breath on that and just be thankful for the days that have passed. <laughs> <laughs> Don't jinx it. But that's my update. Shortest update I think I've ever made. That was a good update. It was a good update. I'm excited for that video. I'm excited for it. It didn't post yet, right? No, it will on Sunday. Sunday. Okay, cool. Sunday. 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 Well, it already posted for you, audience. You've already... It's out there. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have already seen it. It's out there. Go watch it. Nobody money shame me. (laughs) No, (laughs) never. And you know, honestly, that price, yeah, it's a little steep, but if someone's looking to build a garden for their home, whether it's a forever home or not, even if you're going to be there for the next few years, it's not like you're going to have to do any of that again this year. You're literally just buying soil and and the produce, you know? So I feel like it'll it'll definitely pay off in the long run. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Hey! Just that initial cost kind of sucks. Adam, how was your week? (laughs) (laughs) She mutes it and then yells. (laughs) I love it. Uh, I pulled a Nicole. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, you know, speaking of money shaming, (laughs) y'all, Crumble Cookies has me in their clutches. Oh, no. And they're so fucking expensive, but oh my god. I wait, I've never heard of such crumble cookies. Okay. It started in Utah, I think. And it's uh it's a very I don't know. Utah There's, thing. There has to be one around you. But anyway, they're freaking the best, most delicious cookies I've ever eaten. But they have a new they have a new like weekly menu. So there's like six cookies six different cookies for a week and then it changes the next week. And so I can't go in there. No, I'm not. (laughs) I might as well be. But I can't go in there and just get like one of the cookies. I was like, well, I have to have get all six and thirty dollars later. I'm like, "Mm." thirty dollars. Thirty dollars for six cookies. Thirty dollars. It's sugar and flour. (laughs) They're so good. You have no idea. But I just thought about that because I picked some up on Tuesday and I was like, they're already gone. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Oh, it's they're good though. Like they're like soft and like they oh, stay soft too. Like. Yes, some of mm. them are served warm. They're so good. Yeah, they are good. <laughs> Nicole, there has to be a crumble cookies near you. Just like search it, and I'll have to look it up. Treat yourself. Yeah, and I don't need any more addictions. Okay. <laughs> we'll go when I visit. We'll go and like okay. we can justify it because we're sharing. Okay, but there's a new show on Netflix called. Well, it's by Jonathan Van Ness, who had a podcast called Getting Curious. And I think he still has the podcast, but they made a TV show about it. Mm. And there was an episode, and it's so good because it, it, the whole premise of his podcast or their podcast was uh, to find something, get curious about it, talk to experts, and learn. Like it was all about learning and learning. Uh, and so the new show on Netflix is really good, but there was an episode about, you know, why do I love snacks? And it went through like all of like the food science and stuff. And when I tell you that I realize I'm probably addicted to sugar, like I'm I'm a hundred percent addicted to sugar, and I really need to stop because like <laughs> listening to that episode, I was just like, yeah, it's they bad. Like, they showed like a brain on cocaine and a brain on sugar, and they were like exactly the same. Oh, I hate seeing stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, nobody likes to nobody likes to admit they have a problem, but I feel like the sugar thing is just it's never going to happen. Like there's sugar in literally everything. I know. When I did Whole30, it was so hard because you can't have you can't have you can have fruit sugars, but you can't have added sugars and like literally ketchup. Everything has sugar in it because from this episode, I learned that they do that because a lot of the additives they put in have a bitter taste so they have to add sugar in to cancel out the See, bitter. See, and you can do and you like most important meal of the day, coffee, and you do <laughs> black. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I can't. I cannot do black coffee. I've tried to wean myself off like very slowly 
off of sugar and creamer and it's just awful like i can't do it yeah. so i feel like with that alone the amount of sugar that's in my coffee it's just like <laughs> diabetes waiting to happen you know but you know this is really i think watching that episode it made me realize like for probably the better part of a year i haven't felt wonderful mentally you know and we can chalk it up to everything that's going on in our world the pandemic like all of this stuff but mentally i just haven't Mm -hmm. been i'm i'm not in a healthy spot like i'm not in a bad spot it's just like i don't have motivation i don't have focus i don't have any of that and Mm -hmm. i remember when i was doing whole 30 i felt so much like I felt intelligent. I felt like my brain was working. I felt like sharp. Uh, I had motivation. I had focus. And I'm just like, okay, I really need, I need to make a change in my life regarding my diet because Mm -hmm. it's just going to, you know, the food that I'm eating Mm -hmm. is not fuel for my body. It's just, it's just not. And that's what I need to focus on. But who knows? That's a journey and I'm lazy as fuck. So if it can go in a microwave <laughs> or, or just open up and go in my mouth, like I'm all for it. So. <laughs> oh um. my gosh. That's what's so hard about like Whole30 and Paleo because you have to like make a lot of stuff from scratch. And that's just like not a sustainable lifestyle. Like you can't do that. Like not environmentally sustainable, but like personally sustainable like who has time to do that you know it's just like my gosh it's hard yeah Yeah. i just want to be famous and just like have a cook come on (laughs) i mean i thought steve was doing that i thought steve okay yeah Yeah. steve does does he does but then i feel guilty being like i feel guilty about like steve um i'm gonna need you to cook healthier things i mean we did cut out meat for my diet and at home of course if we go out we eat but like, and that's mm-hmm. not being healthy, I guess. But, but because like the stuff we're eating is like fake chicken breaded patties that are sure full of <laughs> sodium. But yeah, I feel bad to be like, okay, I want to eat healthier, so you need to do more work. <laughs> maybe yeah. I should help. <laughs> well, okay, no. I'm just gonna shut my mouth. So yeah, maybe you should help. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Oh, but God, you know what I though like i kind of i kind of get how <laughs> like i guess well i don't get it like i yeah i say you should help but jay doesn't really <laughs> help much either and he doesn't cook and i don't mind it like i don't really mind the cooking like as long as you're cleaning something like while i'm cooking and we're you know taking the weight of whatever then mm-hmm. it's fine like so I'm, i can imagine that steve likes to cook like he must enjoy it he somewhat does, yeah. 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 Oh, man. But yeah. I'll never forget when I came over to your guys' house and like Steve made dinner and I was like, wow, this is great. <laughs> like, he cooks. It's awesome. <laughs> Does Daniel cook at all? Um, no, he. <laughs> OK, there's a certain there's certain things that he cooks. Yeah. But he usually gets home so late from work like there's no point in me like waiting you know, like it wouldn't mm-hmm. even make sense logistically, but um, no, he doesn't usually cook, but he can do like spaghetti and like frozen pizza, uh, cereal. <laughs> it's not even cooking, but yeah, he he can cereal. feed himself <laughs> if I don't want to cook. <laughs> Daniel so. is like he sounds like me, like yeah, yeah, yeah. If like if Steve goes into the office, I'm melting chips and cheese or eating cereal for lunch. So, like that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's literally Daniel. And he always forgets to take leftovers for di- for lunch. So, like, he eats out, like, every day, and I'm jealous. Like, I have to eat home food all the time. Like, what the heck? No, <sighs> you don't. There's DoorDash. Does no. DoorDash come to your house? I don't know if they would go yes. that far out. Do they? They, they do. do. Shockingly enough. And, like, I always – sometimes they won't – like, unless we tip heavily, they won't mm. – uh, they won't accept it. So, like, it just depends on the night. Like, if it's, like, a Friday night and we order in, like, it'll take a long time for someone to pick it up if we don't tip, like, really, really good. Which, like, listen, I worked in the service industry, so I always tip well. But, like, if we mm-hmm. do, like, the automatic tip that it picks for you, they usually don't take oh, yeah. it, like, on a Friday night. Yeah. So, like, we'll, like, in upgrade the tip by, like, $2 and then somebody will take it. And I'm like, okay, like, get your cash. Like, I, I get it. 
Mm-hmm. But at the same time, like, ah, uh, that like, increases French the cost. French fries cost ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's it's almost not even worth it to DoorDash if you live yeah, in the city it's because expensive. it's like you could just drive three seconds and have it. So for me out here, it is kind of worth it because it's like a 20, 20 minute round trip, like yeah, maybe thirty sure. minute round trip most of the time. Yeah. But yeah, so I, it's funny. But anyway, 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 back anyway. to Adam. <laughs> I also have been like consuming all things Olympics this week because it's my favorite oh, time of year. It's that's the right. most wonderful time. Wonderful time. <laughs> uh, there was there's a scandal in the figure skating world. Ooh. Yeah. So there's a Russian figure skater, and her name is uh, oh I had it pulled up Camila Camila Valieva. She's 15. Mm-hmm. And she landed a quad, the first woman to land a quad in a competition. I watched it and I was just like, holy crap, arms above the head and everything. Like, what? Unbelievable. Uh, But anyway, I think she's at the center of this doping, this doping issue now. Uh And they won gold in the team and U.S. won silver. So if they get stripped of their gold, then U.S. won gold. So go U.S. (laughs) Wait, what is, um, what is the scandal? (laughs) Well, <laughs> apparently she tested positive for a drug that is used to help increase blood flow. Like if you have like angina, which is like a heart issue. Mm. Um, but here's where it gets a little iffy. G- guys, I'm fully into this, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to no, know. I, she's... I, need a, I need the tea. I saw a TikTok about it, but I need the tea from you. She is. Uh, <laughs> she's 15 years old. So under the the agreement from the international skating, whatever... She's labeled as a protected person because of her age, because okay. they're saying she may not know that she's been taking, you know, oh. uh, a banned substance or a banned drug. Like she may just be naive. Uh, but given Russia's his, given Russia's history, like I don't think anything, I don't think anything yeah. is accidental with that country, especially <laughs> after Sochi Olympics and that whole insane thing. So yeah. while she may be naive, like they're saying like, oh, they, they might not strip the medals. They may just penalize her because of her age. But I'm just like, no, I mean, this is Russia. Like you, it needs to be like, <laughs> you know, strip the medals, <laughs> give us the gold. But give she, us the gold. Regardless of her yeah. taking banned substance, she is a beautiful skater and it was amazing. So I was just like, oh, but it sucks that that's overshadowing it now. But again, Russia, so f them yeah yeah for real that's yeah it's it's a difficult situation because she's a a child you know like what if she did i've heard that the coach is a horrible person to the skaters like Mm -hmm. they say that that coach is just like when you turn 16 or 17 you're just done like you're just yeah they want young and people that can fly in there yeah it's it's kind of gross i mean it's just as bad as gymnastics and all of that like there's so many mm-hmm. issues with all of that stuff. Why is it oh, mostly sure. like female sports that that should happen? Like you don't do, are there these kind of scandals in like swimming? Like you know what I mean? I'm sure. I'm I mean sure. there was doping with Russia, but you're right. There's not like other sports where like people's bodies are being morphed into what they want them to be. You know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe there are, and I'm just naive to it. But you're right; it does seem like it's like predominantly the women's sports. Yeah. Although figure skating isn't just women's sports, but yeah, yeah, it's like the women who are carrying that burden of having to maintain something like their body. They'll like delay puberty as well, yeah. like this natural thing that. And usually, if you are like very, very, very athletic, like puberty will be delayed anyway but like they're delaying it beyond what is like quote unquote normal super yeah. unhealthy it's so i was bad. super invested in the whole larry nasser scandal mm-hmm. thing and like just to know like how that stuff goes on and how it went on for so long is so disgusting like so many people right. are to blame for that yes it's what a fucking monster just... oh i awful. honestly don't know how nobody and i watched the documentary about it 
And it was, like, very triggering. I had horrible nightmares for, like, a week after. But, like, my question is, how did no other adult notice? Oh, I'm sure they did. And they just... They just didn't say anything. Pleading the fifth. Yeah, for sure. Because there's no way that people couldn't have noticed. Like, the owners of the place, for sure, they had to know. For sure. Even though they're saying that they didn't. It's like, come Mm -hmm. on. And some of those girls went and reported it early on and nobody did anything about it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, this guy's clearly abusing these girls. So awful. It was just like socialized that like some men are creepy and you just don't talk to them. But like there's no, (laughs) there's no, um, nothing that goes beyond that. Like, you know, we all had creepy teachers in high school, but it was just like, oh yeah, that teacher's creepy. But like, you know, like we can feel these things, but nothing is ever done about it. Yeah. Oh, it's something just... that I wouldn't necessarily recommend you watch if you had nightmares from the Athlete A documentary, but there's a new Bill Cosby documentary out, Ooh. and it was just completely mind-blowing, like to the point where it was like women definitely came forward early on, like decades ago, and no one did or said anything about it. Ugh. And people still don't think that people still think he's innocent. It just freaking blows my mind. I don't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't you like to it, think but... that as like a country and as a as a like humanity, we've come a far way, but we haven't at all. Like, because no. they're still fighting for the Violence Against Women Act and uh, protections for victims, and it's just I don't know. I, mm-hmm. If I think too much about it, I get really disheartened, and I'm just like, "This, this, <laughs> this place sucks. Take me away." <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. this podcast got real dark too. Yeah, oops. <laughs> but you know, terrible side of the Olympics aside, I still love watching the Olympics. Like, I just think it's so cool. <laughs> like, it is pretty cool. The things that a human body can do, like, it's just wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Mia was telling me that she likes. Um, hockey and there's uh, well i don't know if there is do you guys know if there's any like professional women hockey leagues Mm -hmm. is there yeah i know there is in the olympics because i saw it in the olympics and i was like oh that's pretty cool i'm sure canada has some okay that's where most of the but yeah i don't like hockey because i feel like i can't even find the puck on the tv screen (laughs) with the camera following it and i'm just like i don't know how these people Mm. Can pass they go it. so fast. Yeah, I don't get yeah. it. I'm not that coordinated. I'm it's, nowhere near that coordinated. Hockey is like so much better in person. Like yes. way, way better. I mean, most sports are, but like football is so boring in person. Basketball is exciting. Hockey, I think, is the most exciting in person sport that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been because they get in fights. Pretty fun. They yeah. punch each other. <laughs> 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 anyway Uh, okay well that's all for me that's all you know my week cookies and olympics yeah um (laughs) my week was pretty productive too i'd say i'm like a month ahead on recording which i have been since the beginning of the year yeah i've i've just been pumping them out listen i started i started realizing that like I live here too. I need to stop feeling bad about putting people out of the kitchen for an hour of the day to get work done. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I need to record. Like, this is just what it is. And I like recording in the room that I do the podcast in too, which is Tia's room because it's quiet and like it's carpeted, but there's no plants behind me. So I just feel like I'm letting down people watching my videos because I have like no plants back there. But, um, I have, yeah, I've been, I've been really productive. So kind of like you, Becca, I'm in this like zone of recording and like staying up to be Mm -hmm. with my videos. And it is tiring because it's like, well, we all have two channels, you know? So like, I feel like when you're trying to put content on both channels, it becomes Mm -hmm. like, almost like wait, when is this scheduled to go out and what do I need for next week? And then you get sponsorships and it's like, oh crap, you know, like it's, it's a lot of work mentally. And I'm kind of wondering if I'm going to be able to hold it all down once I start weddings again Mm -hmm. in uh, April. So I'm just like, listen, I'm going to be consistent while I can be. (laughs) 
and then just see what happens you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. but um but yeah. yeah it's been it's been nice it's been nice to be that ahead and not really worry about like oh shoot i need a video to go out this week i've thought even about recording like videos that are like kind of evergreen like my favorite trailing plants my you know stuff like that like you could post it mm-hmm. whenever i've thought about yeah. filming like maybe five of them and just like having them on a day where i don't have a video and just being like here you go that's a really good idea people really li- i actually really like videos like that and especially like people get mm-hmm. just getting into house plants i feel like we all started with videos like that like your search yeah. was whatever plant you were wanted to buy that week and then you'd search up all the details about that plant or like care like care videos on a specific mm-hmm. you know genus or whatever so that's a really good idea yeah i have like well, I only have one in my little back pocket as of right now, and I have no idea what I would post it, but I'm just going to hold on to it just in case. Yeah, why not? I mean, you may have long hair by then again, but who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my hair might have grown a lot. Uh, we'll see. You have to make the videos with that in mind. Just pull all your hair back, put a hat on, hoodie. Yeah. You're like, perfect. No one will be able to know it's two years later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> curl it so it looks short no matter what like perfect yeah (laughs) yeah but that's pretty much like all I've been doing this week I'm counting down the days to when it's summer vacation because then I won't have to drive 30 40 an hour I don't even know how much I drive each day taking the kids to school it's just it's a lot so Mm -hmm. I'm excited for summer already and I've never I'm never really excited for summer but I'm ready for like stuff to start blooming and for the snow to go away (laughs) and it's not yet that's okay do all of your kids go to the same school well the older ones who could they all go to different schools because (laughs) of age or just because that's how it worked out that's just how it worked out because Jay's girls live will permanently live with their mother and they're only here like you know on the weekends so Mm -hmm. they go to a school close like down the block from their mother's house okay yeah and then then tia went to high school and she's in the city city so now she's in high school kayla's still at that grammar school and mia's at the grammar school that she was at but then even next year mia's going to be in the suburbs where we're at and they're still all going to be different. Is it normal for kids there to like drive themselves to school at age 16? Like, are you going to let me do that? Yeah. I mean, if we have enough cars here to be able to like let her do that, but her school's only like three blocks from here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so she's probably going to either ride her bike or walk. Like it doesn't make sense to drive. Yeah. Um. Once that time comes you know yeah yeah oh my gosh it's not that far away not to scare you but (laughs) i know i want to throw up thinking about it (laughs) they get big Uh, so fast adam and i are childless and just listen it's been a struggle this year (laughs) since we moved because we've we've seen tia and kayla a lot less and it's just it's been a mental struggle with where they're at with their ages not to mention, I watched a movie yesterday that completely wrecked me. I know we're supposed to be getting onto the episode because we're 33 minutes in. But <laughs> if you have teenagers, even if you don't have teenagers, because we were all teenagers at one point and we all had some type of parents at one point, watch this movie and it'll just kill your soul. It's called Fallout. <laughs> <laughs> God, you guys. I've never heard of this. Is it new? It's on HBO Max. When I tell you that I cried and laughed, it was just up and down through the whole movie. I don't know. It was probably because I was watching it with Mia and Mia's going to be 15 and she's going into high school. It's about a school shooting and kids going through a school shooting. Mm. And also when I tell you that's one of my biggest fears, (laughs) it's just so scary having kids all at different schools, you know, and like you just, you never know, you know? So Mm -hmm. I was a wreck. I was a wreck last night. And I was like, this is not helping my mental state at all. But it was a really good movie to watch with her because it was kind of like, 
you know, there was some drugs and alcohol and like depression and therapy. All of that was in there. And it was just, I thought, I think it was good for her to see, you know? So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what a good mom. I'm, I'm, I'm getting anxiety just thinking about it. Let's, let's go into our episode. Cause this is a really, really good episode. I'm excited about this. Yes. We got some fun submissions about some beneficial bugs and I don't know. Do you want to start with our experience with beneficial bugs? Because only one of us has some experience with them. Yeah. Yeah, we can. That would be me. Yeah. That Adam, would be moi. Yes. Because me nor Becca have had any experience with beneficial insects. But I'm telling you, like, after listening to some of these submissions, they haven't listened to them yet, but I did because I was taking them off Instagram. I'm kind of like encouraged to try some specific ones. So, okay, let's hear your experience with nematodes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Also, the the false mites, the flat mites, the whatever you want to call them are back on my Hoya. So I'm like, I think I probably need to get some beneficial bugs. Mm. I think I do. Um, like all your Hoya? Well, if I look close enough, probably yes. I don't those yeah. little those little bastards. Um, but beneficial nematodes are, uh, a, a beneficial bug that kills fungus gnats. I mean, nematodes kill a bunch of different things. The ones I've used were the species Stein, Steiner, Steiner neiman feltii, and it was specifically for fungus gnats. What a word. And <laughs> I know. You just knew that off the top of your head. <laughs> Everybody should know that he just said that without reading anything. <laughs> Well, I did a YouTube. It was one of my first YouTube videos, but please don't go watch it because yeah. it's so weird and awkward. <laughs> well, I have I have to watch it now. Yeah, but, uh, go watch it. I used them because I had a fungus gnat problem, and I was like, okay, well, let's try these nematodes. And it was winter in Illinois, and they came, and you have to keep them refrigerated until you're trying to use them. But it was like almost like a powder substance, so I don't know. I think that like the eggs or whatever was in there. I don't know how it works, uh, but you mix it into water, and nematodes are like a little parasitic worm. You can't see them with your eyeballs. I know it sounds gross. They don't crawl out of the pot. Like They're just there to do their job, which is killing fungus gnat larvae, which is probably the hardest stage of fungus gnats to kill, which is why you always feel like they're always around, because they can lay mm, eggs yeah. like nobody's business. What a great job to have. <laughs> Your sole purpose in life is to kill fungus gnat larva. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so it's amazing. It's um, amazing. I you had so I had to water all of my plants and that's when I had no leca, so I was all soil. I was an all soil boy. I was a dirty boy. And uh I had to water <laughs> all the plants cuz they all had to be moist. And so I went around and watered all my plants, and then I mixed the beneficial nematodes into the water can, and then I just kind of gave up each plant a little bit of it. And mm-hmm. they will stay alive as long as they have a food source and the pot stays damp. But if it if your soil dries out and the fungus gnat larva is gone, they just starve and die, which is also sad to think about, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Um, and to be honest, it took care of, it took care of my fungus gnat problem almost immediately. Like I just immediately noticed a change. So I was a huge proponent of like using beneficial insects. That one is a little different than some of the other ones you're going to hear about in this episode because you didn't see it. It was kind of under the soil doing its work, getting into Mm -hmm. fungus gnat larvae and any orifice it could find to just kill them. So... (laughs) <laughs> Orphis. Yeah. Orphis. What a beautiful, <laughs> amazing romantic word. Um got some great words in this episode. Uh but I feel um, like I still get comments in that video and everyone's just like, what happens when the fungus not lover's gone? Do they crawl out and like can they infect humans? And it's like, no. No, 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 no. Like they won't get in <laughs> they don't have they won't crawl into you unless you have fungus not larva in your body. I don't know. And I'm sure if we look back through our, our DMs, Adam, I'm probably one of the people that asked you that because <laughs> I remember watching your video and I was like, he has literal worms in his pot. Like, f- gross. Like, that's just, I'm never doing this. And you explained it to me. But yeah. So, so 
beneficial nematodes are bay. It was it was wonderful for my fungus <laughs> net issue, and I highly recommend them. But do your research. Make sure you get the right species because again, some of them are like foliage nematodes that like live in like droplets of water and you missed it on the plant kind of thing oh. and then like if a bug like a thrips or something starts like drinking that little droplet then it ingests a nematode and then it kills them so there's a whole oh. like that's a whole different thing but bugs are kind of cool they're cool but we're going to talk about murdering some today folks so yeah. if you're squeamish about that there's a lot of death talk so okay <laughs> okay so we got some <laughs> submissions from you all in our instagram we asked you guys to send us in some voice messages with your experiences with beneficials so i'm going to play them for us dj Yay, dlp and we'll-, <laughs> and we'll chat a little bit in between each submission it took me too yeah. long to work out dj dlp like it way too long because <laughs> you like, said it and i was like mean? yeah but i was like i don't get DJ it dj dlp <laughs> And then it clicked. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's really funny. This first recording is from Cortland, just at just Cortland on Instagram. Hey guys, love the podcast. Just wanted to tell you about some of the beneficial insects I've used. I don't know if one of these counts necessarily, but I've used beneficial nematodes. And you literally just mix them in with water and they're super easy. The instructions are usually really easy to use. And it was like immediate fungus gnats were gone, basically. And they stayed gone for about two or three weeks till I ran out of the solution that had nematodes in it. And I used it in my mills, though, because I did not think I would have a fungus gnat problem there until I did. So they were definitely super useful. And the other ones I've used are the predatory spider mites. And those ones were kind of harder to tell what was going on because... Sometimes spider mites are just hard to tell when they're there in general until they're really there. So it was kind of cool to see them like run around in the plants, though. They're pretty fast. And I'm assuming they ate most of the spider mites because I've. Oh, yeah, they cut off. The yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Becca was just like looking at the screen like, uh. And, like, did something happen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the idea of these, like, it makes me smile and i don't know what that says about me but just the thought of like a predator like running around on my leaf and just like chomping spider mites like not that i get off on that but like i smash or pass (laughs) smash or pass smash or pass smash (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's really i can imagine i can imagine that'd be pretty satisfying to watch i mean if you've ever seen a video of like a ladybug eating an aphid, I was just like, snack oh, on yeah. that. Yum. Yes. <laughs> it, they make them look like they taste good. I'm like, should yeah. I try this one? Um. <laughs> <laughs> Joking. Um, okay. So the thing about this nematode situation is it would, how expensive are they? Because it sounds like, well, Cortland said that they ran out. Like, and then the fungus gnats were back. So it's like, do you have to yeah. keep buying it then? Then how expensive is it? Like, how much did you pay, Adam? I don't remember. It, it didn't seem like it wasn't a price that I was like, this is insane. So it might have been like 20 or $30 for a pack of like 5,000 to 10,000 nematodes. Uh, but if you eradicate the problem then you're fine but if you don't treat all of your house plants and you only treat some of them that you feel like are bad well there's probably mm. fungus gnats in those other ones and then they hatch and then they go back to the other plants so it's like you have to be cognizant of treating all of them i think and if you bring a new yeah. plant in separate it and make sure you're doing all of the right things there so do you have your fungus gnats yeah mm. do you have them in your mills ball Becca? Yeah, totally. I had, Mm -hmm. when I had my really bad fungus gnat infestation, um, like a couple months ago, it was my mills bow. It was so Mm -hmm. bad, but it was contained. So it wasn't that bad and they eventually died off. Yeah. But like, oh my gosh. Yeah. For sure. They were everywhere. Just crawling. Booking it around. Maybe it would be worth it for you to try that, to try the nematodes. 
I th- yeah, I say why not? They're also really bad in my plant room right now. I mean, obviously in the winter time they get worse. So yeah, um, yeah, I've got them bad in my plant room. <laughs> it's usually like if there's one flying around in my face, I'm like whatever. But if there's like multiple, that's when I know it's bad. So yeah. that's what's yeah. happening currently. Um, okay, I Who did like- want to hear from. I did like what Cortland said about predatory mites, though, like the predatory spider mites, is that's a thing that people always like, is this a good bug or a bad bug? If it's moving fast, chances are it's a good bug. You know, springtails move fast. Mm. Well, okay, fungus gnats also move fast, but those are a bad bug. <laughs> but, like, if yeah. it's if it's a mite-type bug and it's moving quickly, chances are it's a good one to have. Yeah. Ooh. That's interesting. Okay, yeah. okay. This is at Tracy's underscore plant underscore journal. Hey, Adam, Becca, and Nicole. My name's Tracy, and I've been obsessively keeping plants for several years and obsessively listening to Potted Together. Um, Yeah, I've used beneficial insects several times. I'm not an expert, but I can share my experience. I use them after I've had a pest outbreak. I only use them like as a final cleanup crew after I treat for pests in a more traditional way. Um, most recently I used them after my first thrips outbreak. I treated using Captain Jack's dead bug brew, sprayed every single plant every four days for six weeks. It was horrible. Um, but after the six weeks, I got green lacewing eggs and nematodes, the lacewings for any possible thrips larva on the plants and the nematodes for any thrips larva that could have dropped into the soil. So then weeks later, because I'm still absolutely traumatized after the thrips, I released predatory mites. Uh, Probably overkill, but again, we're talking thrips. I know a lot of people aren't comfortable with releasing thousands of potential bugs into their house. Um, I'm not one to shy away from bugs, but honestly, even if I were, these would not bother me. You don't know they're there unless you are the one to release them. And the lacewing larvae never make it to adulthood in my house. Um, they eat any pests they find, then they start eating each other, and then they starve and die. So I don't ever have like a adult green lacewing flying around the house. Uh, they just don't make it that far. So yeah, all this to say, I use beneficials. I have good luck with them. I'm not willing to rely solely on spraying and I think beneficials are just a really great tool to add in that arsenal against pests. Um, And it's fun to think about them seeking out and destroying those thrips. So thanks for all you guys do and keeping us entertained and educated. Thanks again, guys. Wow, Tracy. That was really sweet. And I am... Wow. (laughs) (laughs) Every four days for six weeks spraying. Like, that is commitment yeah it really is commitment. the entire collection dedication. yeah oh my gosh and we don't know how big her collection is but based on her instagram i'm thinking it's a pretty substantial size yeah um yeah i love how she says <laughs> to see the predatory bugs just like seek out the thrips <laughs> gives her joy mm-hmm. see we're not the only ones who think that that's just a pleasure yeah you know? yeah i kind of think of it like when you have a working dog you know like cattle dogs yeah or, you know like sheep dogs like just like seeing an animal work is so cool because like this is what they're like mm-hmm. born to do you know so it's just cool to see them well they're born to be floofs in our arms but they work too <laughs> but like i think that whole concept is just really awesome and like they're so happy to do that and it's i feel like it's like kind of similar although they will die after they're done working but still like yeah they are they are on this earth to eat these things and you're kind of just like making that possible for them it's cool yeah um it's a circle of life yeah <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I knew you were uh, gonna go there. <laughs> what I really loved about Tracy's message is the fact that she stated that green lacewings, in their adult form, are one of the most beautiful bugs. Like if you've ever seen, and they're here mm-hmm. in Arizona, so I love seeing them. But 
that's my biggest fear with beneficial bugs in my home because I, I need some. But if my cat patches leaves everything alone, but if she sees a bug, she will <laughs> dart for it regardless of what's in her way. Like she's clumsy AF. She'll fly into the window. <laughs> so I've been fr- afraid of predatory bugs. But with Tracy's message, she just said like they, they never got to the adult stage. Which is also kind of mm-hmm. sad to think about that they're just like, oh, all of our food's gone. We're going to start cannibalizing each other. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Don't say that out loud, Adam. <laughs> I feel like you could just like have like a little like death match. But anyway, yeah. it was Oof. it's it's nice knowing that they weren't to the point where they were flying around because that's my biggest fear with predatory bugs. Usually most of the ones, aside from like ladybugs and adult grain lacewigs, they don't really fly. So maybe I should, the mite, the mite predatory bugs, I really think I need to try because they'll stay on the plants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, that mite issue has been such a problem. Like what can you do? I mean, you've done everything yeah. and they just yeah. come back. But I haven't been as... <laughs> As uh, I guess consistent as Tracy, like I did not <laughs> spray all my plants every four days for six weeks. No, 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 no. <laughs> that is so Such much commitment. I did that like I did mine every three days for like two weeks when I found spider mites, and I was burnt out. I yeah. wanted to just give away everything. I don't know how she did that. Like, and thrips are pretty insane. So yeah. Oh yeah, That's probably the worst. But she yeah. said exactly what she should have is that she got nematodes for the ones in the soil because, mm-hmm. and yeah, so that's awesome. So it's she kind covered of like, all bases. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That's what that was really impressive to remember that to like have the mind to get the well, and that's what we say with fungus gnats too. You have to kill the larva and the adults. It makes sense with right. all pests, right? Right. Yep. Okay, so thank you, Tracy. Next, we're going to hear from oh, Brianna or Brianna. I'm going to say Brianna. Do you guys know Brianna, Brianna? I think I, the double I N is know. Brianna usually. Um, yeah. Okay, so we've got we Brianna that. underscore YP. So I got a green lacewing larva from Arbico Organics, and I got... Um, the f- there's 500 of them in like this cardboard little hex thing and it's covered with silk screen and you like peel back the silk screen and you're supposed to tap and they're gonna fall out on your plants allegedly but for me they would not come out like I would tap it and they none of them would come out and I'm scared to tap too hard because I didn't want to hurt them and I got to the point where, like, I had them crawl on my finger, and then I'd put them on my plant from my finger, and there's 500 of them, and I was so stressed out, and I felt like a bug murderer because I bought the bugs, and then I couldn't use them because I could not get them to come out of the little hex thing onto my plants. So, because of how stressful the experience was, I would not do it again, and I there must be a better method I got the idea from Summer Rain Oaks, and I feel like she's a, you know, a reliable source, so I don't know what people do to get those freaking bugs out of there. Um, but, I mean, I, like, on paper, it seems like a really good idea to use insects to get rid of your, um, pests, and I wish it had worked for me, but at least when I'm washing my plants and stuff by hand, like, I know I'm getting the bugs off, whereas, like, with the predatory um, beneficial insects, like, I can't really see them doing their thing, and I just don't really know for sure, and you don't know how many survive, and I don't know, and then there's the whole, you know, ethical stuff, I don't really know, so yeah, would not, I wish I could recommend it. (laughs) Points were, I mean, good, good points were made, honestly, I think we needed a, Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and when I first heard that, I was like, see, now that's something I could see me doing. I could just see like me like pounding these bugs out, out trying to pound them out of my butt, and then them just going everywhere. Like, you know, I don't know. I guess to, everybody has their own experience, but like I could have totally saw myself doing something like mm-hmm. that. 
<laughs> yeah. The I don't know. I think that kind of stuff gets lost in like the shuffle of like, is this a good idea? So like once you decide it's a good idea, then like how do you execute it? Like the execution is the hard part. Right. Mm-hmm. And but so many people have done it and done it well, but still it's like stressful. Yeah. And I would not want to put them on my hands. Then put them yeah. on the plant. Like uh, very involved. <laughs> Such a bummer. I'm sorry it didn't work for you, Brianna. That stinks. Yeah. Um and I also get the fact of like when we spray our pan- pants, when we spray our plants <laughs> with like my rubbing alcohol mix for the mites or whatever like at when i'm in the act of doing it i'm like okay like this is doing something like in my my mm-hmm. there's something in my brain that's saying i'm i'm taking care of a problem because i want it gone now but with predatory mites you kind of have to be okay knowing that those other bad mites are going to be on your plants for a while because you don't know when you know and mm-hmm. i think whenever yeah. we find pests we're like they have to be gone now but that's not the case with pests cuz they have a life cycle and it takes a it takes a while yeah. but i think when we spray mm-hmm. our plants we're like feeling like okay like you know i'm on my path to being eradicated but with predatory bugs you have to have a bit more patience and i'm not good at yeah. that either so i would feel the same way as mm-hmm. brianna yeah i that i'm probably the same way too i think that that's why like so far, I'm kind of like in Tracy's technique where she went in and she sprayed all of her plants first to get that like initial, okay, maybe I've killed most of them. And then went in with the lace wings and the nematodes because she, then she did mm-hmm. like a double like kill the adult, kill the larva, you know? Yeah. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's the whole conversation of like ethics as well, which is such a hard, like, is this even ethical? Yeah. Like. I don't know. It's just like so hard. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Honestly, I I don't know. Okay. Now we're hearing from Josefina at Sir. Hey, Adam Becky. Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) I pressed play too soon. Um, Josefina at sir.plants.a.lot. Hey, Adam Becky and Nicole. Love the podcast. You make me laugh so much. And it is literally my thing that I look forward to every single week. So Mm -hmm. please don't ever stop the banter. I want to tell you about my experience with uh, Thrips predatory mites. Uh, The species that I use is called Amblasius swirskii. I'm going to type it out in case I'm pronouncing it wrong because it is very possible. But um, anyway, I got these predatory mites because it is winter and I found thrips on my plants. And since your girl has seasonal depression, she wasn't going to run around the house with insecticidal soap every five minutes. So instead, I decided to get predatory mites (laughs) to do the work for me. So uh, to begin with, it was a little bit more expensive than your usual insecticidal spray. I paid about $30 for 10,000 mites. I didn't count them, but they said that there were 10,000. So, you know, I'm just going (laughs) to believe that. So when I distributed them um, all over my plants, uh, I didn't really see them do anything. I even got a macro lens so that I would be able to spy on them and actually see them eat thrips because I thought that would be really fascinating to do. Unfortunately, I didn't see them do anything. So I guess they just did the work when I wasn't looking, which fair enough can relate. I'm not good at working under pressure either. But yeah, uh, a couple of weeks later, you know, I found out that I am not seeing any new thrips on my plants, which is amazing. I love that for me. This particular species only eats the eggs and the larva. They don't actually eat the adult thrips. So I had to actually remove the adult thrips manually using a cotton bud. Um, but as far as the eggs and the larva go, you know, like I haven't seen any new adult thrips, um, in a while. So it has been very, very effective. And I gotta say, like, I thought I would be really freaked out about having beneficial insects in my house. And after I released them, I had to take like a 45 minute long shower because I felt like things were crawling (laughs) all over my body. 
But, oh. uh, you know, I, I kind of got used to it. And every once in a while, I would just see the predatory mites just running around on my plants. I'd just be like, hey, buddy, you're doing good job. You go, girl. <laughs> One thing I will say is that um, you're supposed to keep the humidity above 70% to allow the predatory mites to be able to reproduce. Um, I didn't really fill up my humidifier ever <laughs> and they were still fine um they probably would have lived for a little bit longer if i had done that but uh by the way it's been like a month and a half now and i haven't seen any in like two weeks on any of my plants so i presume that they have all withered away and died may they rest in peace but even then it was still enough time for them to do the godly work that they were put on this earth to do so <laughs> I am eternally grateful and I would say if you're as lazy as me and you don't really want to worry about thrips in your house and you can spare the extra couple bucks then it's definitely worth it. Go thrip killers. Anyway, love your podcast. Thank you so much. Bye. Oh, she did the <laughs> wow. bye. She did a bye. bye. Oh, Josephine, I loved I, that. That was great. Like, you want to be a guest? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Very I was entertained. I was here for all of that. That was great. <laughs> yes. Thank you for the information. Um what was your guys' takeaway from that? I think it was good advice about the humidity. Like maybe people don't think about that. Um maybe it's on the instructions, maybe it's not. I don't know. But to get your area up to over 70% humidity can be difficult in some areas. Like I imagine that's hard for you, Adam. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, and that would be for them to reproduce, right? So if you wanted them there, the predator's life cycle to continue. Longer. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I mean, that is an important thing to note, that you should really understand the conditions that would be best suited for predatory mites. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe you don't have to keep your humidity at 70%, but like figuring out how to care for them until they're on the plants or whatever. Because, yeah. you know. Some some of them have to stay cool because the eggs are like in a not a frozen state but like a catatonic and then when it warms up they start hatching and but yeah. um yeah I if I had thrips if I had a thrips infection all over my collection I would not hesitate to use predatory thrips because the thrips are just mm -hmm. the, the absolute worst so yeah uh that's pretty cool I don't know I like that yeah. yeah. I also like how she just was like, yeah, I'm not dealing with this and I'm going to let these bugs deal with it yeah. and I'm going to go just continue about my day and not worry about it. Like, mm -hmm. that's kind of a great way to think about it because having a pest outbreak is so stressful to begin with that if that method worked for her and all she had to do was just release a predatory bug, then it's like, hey, mm -hmm. why worry about it when you don't have to, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Also, the sh the showering for forty five minutes after <laughs> made me laugh out loud. Yeah. That was so funny, and I feel like I would do the same. Also, she yeah. wanted to see them in action, which is just like us. We're like, yeah, eat them, get them. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's like when the seals on like the beach like start fighting each other. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like fighting each other to like sit on the rock, and they're like pushing each other. <laughs> um that was great yeah that was really great i think that was a realistic you know what it's actually like um but again mm -hmm. like i'm just hung up on like how do you get them from the box to the plant that's like ooh, creepy a, lo mm -hmm. a lot of the times i've seen they come in like a little mesh bag that you can just like hang on a plant and then they'll just kind of emerge and go around and with your collection okay. being mostly in like you're, it's not compact. You have a beautiful like area, but it's in that one room. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if yeah. you did a couple of those, they would travel and Find get all way. of your plants. Yeah, and they'd yeah. probably be perfect for your mills bow. Like predatory sure. bugs in a mills bow is probably just like the best circumstances. You know what totally. I mean? Like because it's enclosed. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I mean, yeah. If you have a mills bow, and. I thought that having a mills bow or just like an enclosed area would make me immune to like spider mites and stuff. But when I had my like plasticky greenhouse, I got spider mites in that. And I was like, wait, it's really humid in here. Why is there spider mites? Yeah. But you can still get them. 
Yeah. They don't care. Okay, so this is Chris, Monte Cristo Roots. Hey, Adam, Becca, and Nicole. Uh, just want to start off by saying I love your podcast. Listen to it all the time. Uh, so, predatory insects. Now, the only predatory insect I've ever used to take care of pests on my plants were ladybugs, and I've used them on two occasions. The first time, obviously, a new plant parent. Uh, I did want to go au natural and use ladybugs, and I didn't really do my research. I just kind of saw that everybody was using them, so bought some off a website, pretty cheap, got here pretty quickly, um, and just didn't turn out great. So I let them loose on the plants that were infected with pests, and you, I couldn't really control where the ladybugs went, so that was one downside, as well as the next morning when I went to check on it, of course, because I did not do any research, they were basically all dead. Womp. So, of course, that was very upsetting, and um, I did a little more research this time, checked online, um, looked at a lot of things, that videos from YouTube and Instagram that people were doing when they did release them. Turns out you need to spray a little bit of water to create a little, a little layer of dew on the plants for them to drink, and you, you're supposed to release them, like, I think at night? I can't remember anymore. But... It was a disaster. So the second time around, uh, it went better. But again, the next morning or a couple days later, I did find most of them dead or just hidden in crevices. So for me, uh, predatory insects, no go. Um, sprays and pesticides all the way. Okay. Yeah, I think ladybugs would be hard to control because they just sort of like go everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's an enclosed, you know, area, I Mills think Bow, the, yeah. the ladybugs would, yeah, the Millsbow. I think that they would be a good option for a greenhouse. Um, but yeah, I like how he gave it two tries, though. He he didn't give up the first time, or yeah, didn't give up the first time and tried it again. So yeah, that's. I don't know if I would be able to do it a second time. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> Yeah, ladybugs would be the hard one for me because I do think that they fly around, and so I would think that my, you know, patches would go after them. And but an enclosed yeah. space is good. My sister used them, but she forgot to take out her yellow sticky traps. So make sure you take out your yellow sticky traps. Oh, oh no! If you're releasing oh, no. any predatory mites or beneficial bugs, <laughs> that's, that's a sad. great tip. <laughs> that's a great tip. Oh, Turn gosh. off your catchy. Uh, <laughs> Turn off yeah. your catchy. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's really um, sad. Ladybugs with pets, though, like with cats, th like they're big bugs. Mm -hmm. So like you can see them. I love ladybugs. Some people are freaked out by them. I love ladybugs so much. Like anytime I see them in my house or I just I love them. But um, like cats would definitely I'm thinking would go after them for oh, sure. Yeah. Like they're so noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I was happy we got a ladybug submission because that's the only real like footage I've ever seen of predatory insects mm -hmm. and them going after mealybugs, which was again so satisfying. Oh, yes. But... <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, our next one is from Rose from at Plant with Rose R O O S, and here we go. By the way, I love her voice. It's me too. Like, <laughs> me too. It's of one of those voices. It's like very liquidy. Yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know how to describe it. Besides that, it like just I need really an nice audio book to. by her, like immediately. I know. Yes. I know. Okay, here we go. Hey, everybody. My name is Rose from Plant with Rose, and I love my good bugs. I actually didn't have much success the first time I used them, but I didn't know much about predatory mites and predatory insects back then. Since January 2021, I've used them consistently, which means that I've replaced them every four to six weeks, which I didn't know you had to do, but you do. And then they work much better than when you just do one batch. I am both using them preventatively and for active infestations, and I've successfully used them against spider mites, mealybugs, and thrips, which took four months, the thrips, because they are very hard to treat. 
in my opinion. I've also used them for scale and fungus nets as well. And I'm just really, really happy with them. The only negative that I can say is the cost really, because it does cost money every four to six weeks and not everyone has that. I'm lucky that I have a collaboration with a company for that. And the other thing is the mental thing of bringing more bugs into your house, which not everyone of course wants to do. But if you are open to it, or if you wanna try it, they are so small, you don't even see them most of the time and they are doing the work for you, which is why I love them so much. I no longer spray my plants or treat my plants in any way. I just put the bugs on there. They're my little army and they do all the work, which is awesome. I also really like that it is not toxic. So it's a natural way to treat, which is safer for ourselves, but also our cats and the plants, because if I were to move my plants outside, for example, in summer, then they won't harm any natural pollinators that might be in my garden. Because if you use a systemic, something that's inside the plant, a poison, then it can actually kill pollinators when you move the plants outside. So I wanna make sure that I don't harm nature in that way. Also, they can't become resistant to the good bugs like they could to a treatment, like an insecticide or something. So that's a plus as well. And just in general, it is really easy. Overall, I'm super, super happy with it. I highly recommend it. I love my little army of good bugs. I hope that's helpful. Thanks guys. Oh, she's so cute. Oh, the voice. Wow. I know. <laughs> I, I love her. I love like the idea of calling them a little army because it really is like they're just going out and doing the hard work and you just get to watch. Maybe, hopefully mm -hmm. you can. Um, And I didn't know that she had like a full integrated pest management system. Like every yeah. four weeks she gets a new, new bugs. Like that's a great system to have set up and like every four weeks you know you're spending thirty dollars on that and you can mm -hmm. put that aside and honestly it might be worth it because you've invested so much money into your collection and depending on like the price you've paid it's almost more worth it to do that than lose that plant mm -hmm. right i didn't think about bringing the plants outside either and like the systemics that we're using could harm pollinators because I do bring a good chunk of my collection outside in the summer. So that's a good point. Yeah, there's a mm -hmm. Captain Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, which is uh, a, a great product for pest management, but it has this chemical, this natural bacteria called spinosad, 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 I don't know how you pronounce it, but I think that is mm -hmm. actually outlawed in some of the bigger agricultural states. Like, you can't mm -hmm. buy Captain Jack's or any products with spinosad in it, like at a mm -hmm. store, because of that reason. It kills poll. It can kill wow. pollinators too. So, that was a mm -hmm. good point. Um, yeah, that was a great point. But Rose, which full disclosure, I thought her it was her. She has a YouTube channel and it's called Yoga and Plants with Rose R O O S. But I thought it was ruse, and I was like, oh, she must do stuff with kangaroos, but I never saw a kangaroo in her video. <laughs> I thought it was yoga and plants with ruse. I told her this. But... Oh. <laughs> you know, like goat yoga? I was like, maybe there's kangaroo yoga, like climb into my pouch. I don't know. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> She's got great Those videos. Are... Yeah, Sorry. great. She's great videos. Yeah, great videos. Um, we kind of want to have her on for an episode. Don't yes. we? We do. Yeah, yeah we so. do. Not kind of. We want to have her on for an episode. So stay tuned. Yep. Stay tuned. Yeah. But, but yeah, that oh. was really great. Thank you guys for your submissions. I'm going to pass the episode back over to Nicole's responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was really great. I'm so happy that everybody kind of came in with something different. Like we got some positives. We got some negatives didn't really work for some people when it worked great for others and i think that that's the thing to keep in mind too you know just like chris did if it doesn't work for you the first time maybe try again maybe try a different predatory bug and see if that works better i honestly think that i'm going to give nematodes a try because it's in the mm -hmm. soil and like we said they are not going to be adults flying around and you can't see it <laughs> out of sight out of mind um, just to see if it helps with fungus gnats. I don't have a huge problem with fungus gnats. I don't think, I mean, every once in a while they'll fly in like Jay's face or Ted's face and they'll be like, you know, but for me, it's not really that big of an issue. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I really enjoyed hearing everybody's opinions on them mm -hmm. and 
was happy we got some some different types of bugs in there too yes and we're really curious to know if you guys have tried predatory bugs so go over to our instagram and leave a comment on today's post and let us know what you've used if it's worked pro tips you if want you to have shoot them. us a yeah pro tips um stuff to keep in mind when using them if you had any issues like brianna with you know not being able to kind of get them out of their little home that they get shipped in that would be great to know too because i'm sure she's not the only one that's had that issue Mm -hmm. and yeah it was a fun episode guys i enjoyed this very much yeah, this was so I. Wait, is it like fun making plant content? I don't what? know. It's it's actually kind of fun. You know, I <laughs> I was running I was running around all week like posting and I was like, okay, let's get some feedback. And then I was like recording the answers and I was like, I'm actually doing a little bit of work for this podcast. <laughs> and can I call myself a real podcaster because of this? You I don't definitely know. Can. I think I can. We all yes, can. Okay, you can. good. Perfect. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, be sure to leave us a review. I think you can leave a review on Spotify and Apple podcasts now. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it just helps us get into the right people's ears. Tell people about us. Recommend us if you like us. And then Mm -hmm. don't forget to follow us on all of our socials. You can find me at my clean leaves on Instagram at not dude K N O T and at De La Plants. And at Potted Together Podcast. Yes. Our Potted Together. Potted Together, Together Podcast. Podcast. And I have one thing that I forgot to say at the beginning, but I was an, a, a guest on Where Are We Growing Podcast. Um, it's Ooh, with two Nicole. plant content creators who I'm pretty positive that they like really started making plant content on TikTok, yeah. which is that's like a whole new emerging group of plant content creators so they both have a pretty good following on tiktok like uh big following on tiktok let's say yeah so So, (laughs) yeah it was really cool to get to chat with them and if you want to listen to that episode we'll have that linked in the show notes as well i told them that i would plug it over here too and i was telling them how fun (laughs) it would be for all five of us to do an episode together yes (laughs) it would be absolutely chaos with five microphones but i think it'd be kind of fun (laughs) Yeah, I think it'd I'm, be so I'm much down fun. to try. Yeah, yeah, try anything once. Sweet. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it. See you next week. Bye. 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 An avid cyclist dreams of turning his passion into a business. He consults his banker to help find the best path. Now bike wheels are being built, and all it took was a little push to get rolling. First Horizon Bank. Let's find a way. Go to firsthorizon.com slash Clint.